Hello and welcome, and in this video we're going to be talking a little bit about Port Spoof, a fantastic utility that takes your unused TCP IP ports and turns them into something different whenever an attacker actually goes about trying to scan them. This video is part of the Active Defense and Cyber Deception class that we run at Wild West Hacking Fest in San Diego and in Deadwood, and also I run in Black Hat. Now, as always with all of these videos, we're going to be using the Active Defense Harbinger distribution. Once again, if you want this distribution, you go to activecountermeasures.com. You go into the free tools. You'll see ADHD listed there. You can download the VM and play along. All of the instructions are on the ADHD usage document on the desktop. Now, to get to the instructions for using port spoof, we're going to go to annoyance. We're going to go down into port spoof which I went right by it. Here we go. We're going to select port spoof. Let me zoom back out. And it's going to have a wonderful little website that you can go to get more information about port spoof and overall description of port spoof and what we're actually doing. Now, let's get started. And the first thing we're going to have to do is play around with IP tables rules. Now, the way port spoof works is it listens on a port. In this situation, it's going to be listening on port 4444. And we're going to create an IP tables firewall rule that takes all of the traffic that's coming in a port or a port range. As you can see here, we have matches TCP as the protocol. And then it's going to match the destination port. And in this situation, the range between 1 and 65,535. And it's going to redirect it to the local system on port 4444. Now, what port spoof is going to do is receive those connections initially, and it's going to say that every single port that is scanned is open. And then we're going to change it so it actually goes with a variety of different services. So if we were to look at my system now and how it looks in a scan, if I run my Nmap scan, give it a port 1 to 10. I'm only going to run 10 ports in this video, and you'll see why. But port spoof can greatly increase the amount of time it takes for a successful port scan. We're going to go with ports 1 through 10 against my Linux IP address, and it comes back with all of those ports currently closed. Now, why does it think that those ports are closed? Well, one of the things I can do is I can add in the dash dash reason flag. And with the dash dash reason flag, it, we are seeing that the connection itself is refused. There's a number of reasons why you might not get a response from a system. Um, you could get a reset. You could get no response whatsoever. You could get an ICMP port unreachable. There's a wide variety of reasons. And with the dash dash reason flag, Nmap's going to tell us why it thought those ports were closed. Well, now let's go configure port spoof. So I'm going to use the wonderful power of copy and paste. And just so you know, copy and paste is without question the single most powerful tool that any hacker, pen tester, or security professional has. I'm going to become root, and I'm going to paste in that long string for IP tables. I'm going to hit enter. We have now created that IP tables rule on this system. Now, to get the initial working port spoof, the only thing I have to do is just run port spoof. Now it's running. So now, if I go back to my system that's quote unquote running the attack over here, you can see that initially all of the ports were closed. Now, all of those ports are open. And the reason why it states that those ports are open is because it received a SYN ACK. And port spoof is sending those SYN ACKs. Now, this in and of itself is not all that interesting. It's just basically saying, yep, Synac port's open. But with port spoof, we can actually do something a little bit more interesting with port spoof. You see, what we can do with port spoof is we can actually give it a signature file on the system. So I'm going to copy that string with the signature file. I'm going to paste in port spoof. Now port spoof is running and it's saying using user defined signature file at user local Etsy port spoof signatures. Now, what does it mean to have a signature file? 
Well, a variety of different services will respond with a variety of different banners. For example, if you connect to an SSH server, it might come back and say, open SSH in a specific version. You might identify a web server by its banner. It says it's an Apache web server or whatever. We can use those signatures. And to be honest, Nmap uses those signatures to adequately identify what the remote application is on the other side. So now, if we run an actual scan against it, we're now going to do nmap space minus f, but we're gonna do a version scan. And what that version scan is going to do is it's going to attempt to identify what those versions of the different services are on this system. Now it's gonna take a little bit longer, and the reason why it takes a little bit longer is because Nmap isn't just seeing if the port is open, it's actually interrogating that service, and it's trying to identify exactly what that banner is. So there's a lot of stimulus and response that's going back and forth between my system here and the system that we are now currently scanning. If you wanna see status, you can just hit the space bar and it's gonna come back and it's gonna say, well, about 70% done, We're, one's completed, and here is the results. Now, if you look at this point, Portsmove is now completely messed with us because it's saying that port one is open, the service is Telnet, and it believes that it's a Tanberg MPS 800 Telnet D server. It thinks that port four is WebTAM, WebTrends WTAM. We've got a Tobit David.fx IMAP D server. We have a Sunbelt server. What is this madness? What is this insanity? Well, if we were to run this again, it's going to take a little while. Portspoof is taking these signatures from the signature file and it's feeding it right back into Nmap. And it's actually taking a random signature from that signature file and feeding it into Nmap. Now, inevitably, you're gonna have someone say, well, of course, an attacker will be able to see right through this. Yes, I mean, it's gonna create a lot of noise for the attacker, but that's kind of the point. Remember, detection time plus reaction time must be less than the amount of time it takes for an attacker to successfully attack your network. So now we have greatly increased the amount of time it takes for an attacker to run a simple port scan against the target computer system. That's interesting in, in and of itself. It's just going to increase that time. 10 ports, it took 32 seconds to scan 10 ports. If we were trying to scan all 65,535 ports that were referenced in our IP tables rules, it's gonna take a lot longer to identify all those services and ports. Now, if you wanted to file, find a real service that was alive and listening, you would have to run it multiple times and see which ones looked more consistent with what you would expect. And you can also do manual inspection. If you think it's a web server port, just connect to it. But once again, this is greatly increasing the amount of work effort that an attacker has to go through to identify your ports and your services. So this is a fantastic little utility that's built into the Active Defense Harbinger distribution we use for our Wild West hacking uh, classes for cyber deception. And if this is interesting, come hang out. We've got an entire two-day class dedicated to all of this that you should be running. So once again, my name is John Strand. Uh, please check out Enterprise Security Weekly every Wednesday, where Paul is a Dorian, Matt and myself get together and we talk about vendors. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next video. This episode was brought to you by Black Hills Information Security, specializing in pen testing, red teaming, threat hunting, webcast, open source tools, and blogs. It was also brought to you by AI Hunter from Active Countermeasures. The AI stands for actual intelligence. Need a threat hunting solution for the network? Check out AI Hunter. It is also brought to you by Wild West Hackenfest, currently offering conferences in San Diego and Deadwood, South Dakota. To check out the schedule and the speaker lineup, check out wildwesthackenfest.com.